Okay, this is going to be the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg Part 5 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And I'm standing here today on the absolutely gorgeous John Weikert farm lane. Now in our last video, and as we pan around behind here, in our last video um, we were at the George Weikert farm and we showed how the 28th Massachusetts was marching in two ranks up the Weikert farm lane. Well the Weikert farm lane actually is in the distance over here beyond this house and the wooded area and it becomes the John Weikert farm and the John Weikert farm lane which we're standing on now. Now it was on this farm lane also that the 20th Maine under the command of Colonel Strong Vincent also marched their way up to Little Round Top. Now the 28th Massachusetts is the second to last in line and we're going to move forward here. They're the second to last in line on the march. Of course the, the line is as follows. It is the 63rd New York, followed by the 88th New York, then the 69th New York, then the 28th Massachusetts, and then bringing up the rear, of course, was the 116th Pennsylvania. And they're coming into this area along the John Weikert farm lane, and this is about 5 o'clock now in the afternoon of July 2nd, 1863. And what they hadn't realized the whole time was that as they had marched by the left flank, they were actually becoming inverted. And this caused a problem when they got to the end of the John Weikert farm lane. Because they're inverted at this point, everything is backwards. When these men counted off one, two, one, two, one, two, the taller men, in the rear rank, the shorter men in the first rank, file closers, the flag bearers in the center of the line. Now, when they reach the end of this lane and they're ordered to front, everything is backwards. And this is very difficult for anybody, a soldier during the American Civil War. Realizing this, um, Colonel Kelly made some adjustments to his line. He moved the flags and the file closers into the proper position but just kept the men inverted. And then they, of course they would turn right here and they would march toward the wheat field. And this is where they would first be engaged at. So we're gonna, we're gonna walk up here a little ways toward the wheat field and we're actually gonna cross Plum Run. And this is the run that leads from this area through the Valley of Death into Devil's Den. And the 28th Massachusetts Volunteers and Colonel uh, Kelly's brigade would cross Plum Run right over here. And actually, we'll just point it out to you, it's that bridge right here in the distance. Now, of course, at the head of the column of the 28th Massachusetts was their Colonel Robert Burns. And at this point, uh, the 28th Massachusetts, uh, 2nd Corps, 1st Division under Caldwell, 2nd Brigade, they are actually separated because, again, John Rudder Brook and Edward Cross are moving into a different area. Colonel Zook is moving down another area, and here, bringing up the center, would be Kelly's Brigade. This has been our next part, the part five of the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Ultimate. Okay, this is going to be the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, part six on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook, and I'm standing here on the northeast corner of the Bloody Wheat Field. And this is the entrance point for the 28th Massachusetts and Kelly's Irish Brigade on the afternoon and evening hours of July 2nd, 1863, around 5 p.m. Of course, they entered the wheat field right here today where you see the 11th Pennsylvania Reserves, which was also known as the 40th Infantry. They arrived into the wheat field right here where this monument sits behind me. Um, and when they got into this area, they got out of those ranks of twos and back into their battle front again. And of course their battle front, as it was over by the Pennsylvania Monument, was the 116th Pennsylvania in the front on the left, on their right would have been the 28th Massachusetts, and then the rear rank, 63rd, 88th, and 69th New York Volunteers. And at this point, Colonel Zook appears in the wheat field over here in the distance as he came from the Trossel Farm. To the left of the 28th Massachusetts over on this area would have been Colonel Edward Cross. So now these men are not now entering the wheat field. They're not the first soldiers to enter 
the wheat field and fight in the wheat field. Trove Band was up there fighting, and Winslow's Battery, New York Battery, was up there firing at uh, South Carolina Infantry from the 3rd and the 7th South Carolina, which was under Kershaw's Brigade. And we'll get a little bit more into them because the 28th Massachusetts is first going to be fired upon by the 3rd and 7th South Carolina Infantry. Again, they move in this direction uh, toward the wheat field. Now, on July 2nd of 1863, the field that you see behind me was chest high with beautiful golden wheat, grains of wheat. Just a couple hours later, this field would be strewn down with dead men, and all the wheat would be trampled down to the ground, and there literally would be pools of blood. Men um, afterward would say that you couldn't walk on the wheat field without stopping over a body and then puddles of blood. Now in 1863 also, um, these borders of the wheat field were completely contained by Virginia worm fences and, and fences like you see over here along the road now. This whole field was contained by these fences. As these soldiers moved into this position where I'm standing, they took these fences and knocked them down and that's going to be a very important thing in a later video of what happened to the wounded and dying men that suffered here for two days in the wheat field. This has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 6, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. This is going to be the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 7, here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Ultimate. And we are standing here in the bloody wheat field, one of my favorite spots on the Gettysburg Battlefield. And we are now going to look at the movement of the 28th Massachusetts as a part of the Irish Brigade here across the wheat field. As we said in our last part, they entered the wheat field in the northeast corner. And this was a quiet entrance, and these men are now moving across this beautiful golden wheat here on July 2nd, 1863, around 5 p.m. And as they move in this direction, in the distance, just beyond the sign that says wheat field, in the distance you're going to see some artillery up there on the hill, and that is Winslow's New York Artillery. When they reached that area, okay, of Winslow's art artillery, um, that was where they were first fired upon by the 3rd and the 7th North Carolina of Kershaw's Brigade. This is also where b things began to break apart in the bloody wheat field. As I said before, the battle had happened. These guys were another wave of troops coming through this wheat field, but this first wave of troops that entered into this area were being beaten back and pushed back by Kershaw's Brigade. Um, Winslow's battery began to retreat. And, they, and these men now, the 28th Massachusetts is trying to advance through the wheat field and troops are backing into them and crossing in front of them. And this creates quite a bit of confusion. And to break away from that confusion, Kelly then moves them at the left oblique. So he gets them when they're up there on the hill near the battery and moves them at the left oblique and they are going to exit the bloody wheat field on the southwest corner here in the distance where you see the lady sitting with the blue shirt on there in the distance and the monument behind it. That is where the 28th Massachusetts and Kelly's Irish Brigade are going to exit the wheat field and enter the Stony Hill. Now when they are doing this they begin a, a, a very hard push on these South Carolina troops. And these South Carolina troops were completely taken by surprise by this movement. It wasn't expected. And they begin to fall back and when they get close to the rocks over there on the Stony Hill, they actually begin to take prisoners, and we're going to talk about a little bit what they've seen and experienced in our next part. This has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 7, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Ultimate. Okay, this is going to be the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 8, here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Ultimate, and we are here now at the base of the Stony Hill. And as the 28th Massachusetts and, and Patrick, or uh, Kelly's Irish Brigade, uh, began to push these South Carolina troops back off the Stony Hill, this is where they began to take prisoners. And we're going to walk up the Stony Hill to the monument of the 28th Massachusetts. And while we're doing, we're going to make a couple little secret pit stops here and tell you a little bit about it. First off, these sets of rocks right here is where Confederate wounded and about 10 Confederate dead were spotted. Most likely these were men from the 3rd and the 7th North South Carolina of Kershaw's Brigade, rather. 
Um, one of the little secrets of the battlefield, if you come up here, is a, a rock carving that is here on this boulder, and it says PB. Nobody really knows what PB. It could be an early visitor to the battlefield of Gettysburg. It could have been a veteran that come back after the war, carved his name in a rock, maybe where he uh, was engaged at. No one really knows, but it's one of those little things that people pass by this area all the time. Of course, right across the street, as a part of the Irish Brigade, is the monument to the 63rd, the 69th, and the 88th New York of Kelly's Brigade. This is one of the more, and if you want to come on over here closer, this is one of the more uh, beautiful monuments on the Gettysburg Battlefield, but it also contains a secret that not many people know about. And if you'll just bring the, the uh, camera over here, we'll show it to you. Depicted at the bottom of this wall is an Irish wolf camp. And in the size of this, in real small script, it says that this is the Irish wolfhound, which is extinct. Now, when this monument was dedicated and this bronze relief was put on here, it was believed at the time that the Irish wolfhound was an extinct dog. And, of course, we know today that is not true. There, You can still get an Irish wolfhound. It had almost become extinct at one time, and because they had thought it was extinct, they actually put the extinction notice here on the side by the Irish wolfhound. And in our last and final secret as we make our way up the hill, and of course this is in the path of Kelly's Irish Brigade with the 28th Massachusetts, they cross this very ground. And just over here behind the 5th Michigan Monument is something that we know as the Dock Rock. Now the Dock Rock is a temporary field hospital, not made with tents, but with bullets. And this was the surgeon of the 32nd Massachusetts, Z. Boylan, set up his field hospital right here between these boulders here on July 2nd, 1863. It may have been probably the closest field hospital in the vicinity of a battle action at the Battle of Gettysburg. Bolson sets up his area right here, and you can imagine on July 2nd with Confederate troops attacking from the west, that this probably was one of the safest spots in the Stony Hill wheat field area because it shields these big, huge boulders here, which shield you from most musket and artillery fire. So Bolson very smartly sets up his field hospital right here. Um, and this has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 8 on Gettysburg Battlefield, Facebook and